which did not improve the temper of evil Edna one little bit. Pa! said the wicked witch. And pa again! Woe betide anyone who crosses my path today! Now, just about to cross her path was the poor old beast who was feeling very uncomfortable in that long, hairy coat. Oh, how frightfully, frightfully hot one is. Out of my way, you hairy old tarag! Snapped to evil Edna. Steady on, old girl, said the beast. You made me what I am, you know. Once I used to be Prince Humbert the Handsome. Remember? Now, I suppose you couldn't uh, twiddle the old aerials and turn me back into my original shape again, eh? Then one could return to Mummy, the Queen of the Palace, marry a beautiful princess, and one would live happily ever afterwards. Is there anything else one would like? Well, actually, yes. It's so frightfully hot being a hairy beast. I feel like an ice lolly. That's because you are one, and in your original shape, too! <laughs> Edna? That was a very wicked thing to do, said Mavis Crowe the fairy, who had seen all. Sucks boo to you, you overweight fairy person, said evil Edna, and departed, laughing. <laughs> Don't you worry, beast, dear. It will all come right in the end. And even if it doesn't, you are quite the handsomest ice lolly in the whole world. Mavis, said Arthur the caterpillar. You got struck by the sun, girl. Have a bit of a lie down till you feel normal. But I am normal, Arthur. Oh, yes. Chatting to a nice lolly is quite, quite normal. Do it all the time, myself. But it's no ordinary ice lolly, Arthur. It's the poor beast. And look, he's crying. He's not crying, Maeve. He's melting. Oh, my goodness. He must be changed back into the beast immediately. Where's my dear little magic wand? Well, our Mavis is not a tidy fairy, and it took over an hour to find that wand. Claire, move on, Maeve. Our old matey here is going fast. Here I am. Now, oh, here goes. Nothing happened, so she tried again. Nothing. What you need, girl, is a really good wand. When's your birthday? Oh, Arthur, by then the poor beast will have melted right away. Well, just at that moment, straight back from our successful tour of the planet Venus, came the astronauts. <laughs> Here, you useless UFOs could be a bit of use for once. Now, what you've got to do is... It was one of Arthur's better ideas, but it was two hours before the astronauts return. Hey, that's a beaut! Oh, from the Milky Way! Fancy! Well, Arthur tied the star onto a stick, handed it over to Mavis and said... Have a go with that girl. There's not much of the lolly left, Arthur, but I'll do my best. Oh, well done, Maeve. I expect he'll soon grow. I think he's rather sweet as he is. Could Mavis. One day, Mavis Cruet that fat little fairy was strolling through Doily Woods when she met a stranger. Oh, she said, for it was quite a strange sort of stranger. What? What are you? asked Mavis. I, lady, am a gnome. Now Mavis warmed to the gnome immediately. No one had ever called her a lady before. Well, gnomey dear, she said. I wouldn't go any further down that way if you want to stay being a gnome, because down there lurks evil Edna, the wicked witch, who could cast a nasty old spell on you and turn you into, well, almost anything. She wouldn't hurt me, said the gnome. Everyone.
loves us gnomes. We really are very nice. Very nice indeed. Good morning, lady. Well, there's no telling some people, but Mavis told Arthur the Caterpillar. Arthur, you'll never guess. I've just met a real, live gnome. No such thing. There is so. He's just gone down there. Come on, I'll introduce you. Gnomes, his figments of the imagination. Now the gnome had just met a curious object. Good morning, it said. I am a camera, which was a fib. It was really evil Edna. I am a camera looking for a handsome, handsome gnome whom I can photograph for the cover of the magazine, Ideal Gnome. And I think I've found him. Now, sir, you would look really, really fantastic sitting down, pretending that you're fishing. <laughs> like this? asked the gnome. Oh, that is really, really excellent. Now, smile, please. turn every gnome in the world into stone and become rich, rich, rich. Everyone buys stone garden gnomes. A few minutes later, Mavis and Arthur found that poor gnome. Look, Arthur, there he is. And oh, he's fishing. Fishing? Here? Whoever he is, he must be a right nutter. Cooey, Mr. Gnome. Here I am again, Mr. Gnome. Mr. Gnome? I ask him if he's caught anything. Mr. Gnome! You, Mavis Crow, have been chatting up a garden ornament. Look. Solid stone. I'm sure it's my poor gnome who called me Lady. <laughs> <laughs> you two are now employees of Edna's Garden Ornaments Limited. Now move that valuable piece of sculpture I've just made over to my place. Well... They tried, but that stone gnome was so heavy. Ouch! Take it off my foot, you clumsy! Take it off! Take it off! Oh dear, but I'm afraid we can't. We're just not strong enough. We're only little, aren't we, Arthur? But I'll tell you what. You could change him into a real gnome, then ask him nicely to get off your foot. I'm sure he would. So that is what evil Edna had to do. She went. If I were you, mate, said Arthur, I'd scarper. The gnome scarpered. I wonder if there's any demand for stone caterpillars or fairies as garden ornaments. <coughs> but they had scarpered too. <laughs> Arthur the Caterpillar discovered Mavis Cruet being a bit depressed. There's going to be a big, big contest, <laughs> sobbed the fairy, to find the beauty queen of the universe. <laughs> and it's going to be held here. Oh, fancy. And what's wrong with that, Maeve? I wanted to enter as Miss Doily Woods, but I'm so fat and so ugly. Fat and ugly? Oh, no, I wouldn't go as far as to say that. Oh, Arthur, how far would you go? Well, I'd go right over to here, Maeve, making quite sure I was out of range. Then I'd say, Mavis, you are not fat and ugly. Go on. You're plump and plain. <gasps> beast, beast, beast. It was then that the doorbell rang. May I come in? asked the beautiful fairy. Who, who are you? I am the Avalon fairy with magical beauty aids to make madam even more beautiful. You're wasting your time. I'm so fat, so plump and plain. Nonsense, said the fairy from Avalon, keeping her fingers crossed. Then two hours later, after using the beauty aids... Gosh! I am beautiful. 
it's all in the mind, you know. The day of the contest dawned. And I am Miss Doily Woods. The woods were full of beautiful contestants from all over the universe. There was Miss Mars, Miss Jupiter, and Miss Doily Woods. Rubbish! It was Evil Edna, the Wicked Witch, wearing a yellow sash. I am Miss Doily Woods, whereas you, may this cruet, are to become Miss Murky Duck Pond. Whereupon she cast one of her wicked spells turning poor Mavis into a oh, froggy. What chance could a humble frog have against the assembled beauties from all over the universe, such as the captivating Miss Mars or the unforgettable Miss Jupiter? And the devastating Miss Doily Woods. And there were hosts of others, not to mention the three judges, who all came from the planet Saturn. <laughs> With them came stupendous Miss Saturn. Those judges from Saturn will be biased. It's a big fiddle. Well, the contest began, and when Miss Saturn stepped before the judges... Look at that! Ah, hussy! And look at them! I knew it! Now she's making eyes at them! That settles it. Oh, look! Evil Edna's changed those poor judges into frogs, too! Oh, and one of them has something in his eye, and another... Oh, God! I do believe they're winking! And at me! The frog judges thought Mavis Cruet the most beautiful frog ever, and so Miss Murky Duck Pond became Beauty Queen of the Universe. I shall win next year. I shall turn the judges into nasty little television sets. One terrible morning, the peace of the woods was shattered by... Oh, well done, lads! <laughs> what was that terrible noise, Arthur? Asked Mavis Cruet the fairy. That was the sound of me getting rich! Cried Evil Edna the Wicked Witch. I'm having my trees all chopped down. Then I shall sell the timber and become very rich. But there are such lovely woods, Edna. Oh, think again, Edna, said Arthur the Caterpillar. Think of the ecology. These trees are our homes. Where would you live? Monte Carlo. My mind's made up, Caterpillar. Trees are worth their weight in gold. No, they're not. But they could be trees made of gold. Now, this is where Edna had an idea. Vicious it was. What's vicious about changing oneself into a wishing well? Look, Arthur, a dear little well. I wonder if it's very deep. Splash! Splash! I must be at the deep end, Maeve. Hello! Hello, Arthur! That's odd. Distinctly hot. It knew my name. Then it must be a magic well. A wishing well. You must make a wish. Hmm, but there's nothing I want, really. There is so. You, Caterpillar, would wish to have the touch of King Midas. I would. Okay, then. If it makes you any happier, that's what I'll wish. <laughs> hey, Mavis. Who's this king? What's his name? King Midas, Arthur. Everything the poor man touched turned into gold. Oh, fancy. Well, as it was lunchtime, Arthur departed to his favourite patch of nettles. Are the autumn's coming a bit sudden? Oh, well. Oh, this is a metal nettle. 
Remember me, Caterpillar. I made your wish come true. Now everything you touch turns to gold. And if you ever want to eat again, you must go and touch every tree in the wood. What, every one? And that is what that poor hungry caterpillar had to do. Well, this is hard work and on an empty stomach. Oh, Arthur, whatever are you doing? When Mavis had heard all, she rushed off to that wishing well and said, Wishing well? You've been horrid. So I'm going to change you into a nice, ordinary old well. Help! Help! I'm in the water and I can't swim. Mavis, it's your old friend. Save me. Edna, it was you all the time. Save me. Then you take that wicked spell off poor Arthur, change those vulgar gold trees back into wooden ones, and not chop any more of them down. Yes! Ah! Oh, poor Edna. She looks quite poorly. Maeve, she's not a well person. One day, Arthur the Caterpillar had one of his funny feelings come on. Oh, it's going to happen, Maeve, he said. I know it is. I'm going to become a muff. Oh, no, Arthur, not again, said Mavis Cruet, the fairy. I expected something you ate. No, Mavis, this time it's for real. Well, if you are, it's lucky you got that nice chrysalis already. Arthur had built himself a chrysalis months before, during another of his funny feelings, and there it stood, deep in Doily Woods, all ready for the great day, and quite, quite empty. I come up from Somerset, where the cider apples grow. Mavis, this is where our path divides. You go one way, and stay being a fairy, whilst I go to my chrysalis and become a moth. Someday, who knows, we may meet again. Oh, Arthur, this is so sad. Well, Tata. I've come up from Missouri's air, where the cider apples... Hey, gnome, what are you doing in me chrysalis? This is no chrysalis, my dear. This is a gnome's home. It is a chrysalis, and I know because I built it. You're a squatter, that's what you are. Now, up it. No, I'm no squatter, my dear. I'm going to pay you rent. Here. A bean? If I were you, said Mavis later, I would toss that silly little bean away, forget all about that chrysalis thing, and stay being my little friend, the caterpillar. Never. Gosh, a magic beanstalk. This way to the gnomes, only dears. The gnomes, though, they're all going to be chrysalis. Hey, you no good gnomes, get out of me, Chrysalis. Chrysalis, me dear, this is the home for homeless gnomes. It's about to become a gnomeless home. Now, up it. But the gnomes only made rude noises and pulled ugly faces. Just then, who should enter the wood but a regiment of toy soldiers? Every, 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 halt, 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 halt. Gosh, said Mavis, you're all so handsome. What you lot doing in our woods? Maneuvers, sir! Hi! Well, I don't suppose you could maneuver some gnomes out of my property? No gnome could ever fix the cold steel of the regiment, sir! Arthur told them all, and that fine regiment marched off to take the chrysalis. About five minutes later, the sergeant major returned. The enemy is routed, sir! Oh, how wonderfully brave of you all! All in the course of duty, ma'am! Mavis, 
This is where her path divides. You go one way and... Oh, Arthur, please don't go through all that again, or I'll cry. So once again, Arthur made his way to the chrysalis. Oh, no! Hey, what are you toy soldiers doing in me chrysalis? Chrysalis, sir! These are barracks, sir! Troops for the use of! Oh, Arthur, why are you wearing that funny hat? I'm off to join the army, Maeve. It's the only way I can get into me chrysalis and become a moth. But he wasn't gone for long. They wouldn't have me, Maeve. Said I've got flat feet. <laughs> It was just before Christmas, and everyone in Doily Woods was being frantically busy. Even at night, high above the beech trees. Look up there, Arthur, cried Mavis Crew at the fairy to her friend the caterpillar. Why, said Arthur, it's the annual outing of the Witches Institute, wicked old harpies. Oh, Arthur, they're just dear little old grannies off to draw their pensions and then to do their Christmas shopping. Arpies and Arridans. As Christmas drew nearer, everyone was full of goodwill. Well, nearly everyone. A Merry Christmas to all our readers, said the bookworm. A Merry Christmas, my dears, said the gnome. A Merry Christmas to all you handsome, handsome savages. A horrible, miserable Christmas to worry and all, said evil Edna, the wicked witch. I don't expect she meant it. Yes, I did. Well, anyway, by Christmas Eve, everyone was so excited, especially when the astronauts returned from outer space with the good news. You have? I say they just seen a UFO, WWW. What's that, Arthur? An unidentified flying object with white whiskers. You don't mean... Yeah, and he's coming here. And who, may I ask, is this he person? Santa Claus, Edna, isn't it exciting? You must hang up your stocking. No overgrown gnome is going to see my stocking. If he shows up here going ho, 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 I'll turn him into a red frog. A big red frog! That night, Mavis and Arthur were so excited they just couldn't go to bed. Any moment now, Santa will arrive. What are you doing out on Christmas Eve night, Froggy? Mavis, do you think that evil Edna is... Turned Santa Claus into a red frog? Oh, my goodness! Don't worry, Santa, dear. We shall think of something. Hey, you could try waving the old wand, Maeve. My little wand could never undo the magic of evil Edna, Arthur. Now, I wonder if... Arthur's idea was brilliant. We'll get old Edna to reverse her own spell without her knowing she's doing it. Are you all right in there, Froggy? <laughs> That box is a bit small. I hope he doesn't get Santa claustrophobia. What's that, Arthur? That was a joke, Maeve. Aha! A Christmas box for me! Afraid not, Edna. Mavis and I was having a little argument. Mavis said it was impossible for you to change this box into Santa Claus. Whereas I, knowing how brilliant and clever you was, said you could. Oh, you astute little caterpillar, you. Of course I can. Watch this. Oh, dear Santa, do let us hear you say ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. We seem to have two Santas, Maeve. And it's lucky I've got two legs, Arthur. What's your legs got to do with it? I can hang up both my stockings! <laughs> <laughs>